Hello everybody, all about Simeon, you and Spence here, still in San Francisco at the Game Developers Conference where it's very sunny, but that means I get to do the Starsky and Hutch, take the glasses off. Here we are, it's the last part of our video diary that is going to come to you from America. I say our, it's been very much a shared experience, uh, myself, America and the Nokia 5800. There'll be a final recap part uh, when I get back to Edinburgh, which will be with you at the start of the week, but for now I just wanted to touch on a couple of issues, uh, and the main one being the Nokia 5800 and what it doesn't have. Uh, let's be honest here, uh, there are some things missing on this. Uh, the price is very low. I know I said £200, but uh, it's between 200 and 250 at the moment, depending on how you're pricing it. We've had some discuss discussions on that on the website. But the main thing is, it's an incredibly cheap smartphone. And I think that's the main thing to remember, that with what you have here, it is still very cheap and it is missing things. We've talked about the camera here, but I want to talk about some of the other things. The obvious one, of course, is the keyboard. Uh, and having spent a good two weeks with it now, I have to say, I'm not noticing the fact that I don't have a physical keyboard anymore, apart from one circumstance, which I shall come to in a second. The input options you have, you have a tiny on-screen keyboard, big on-screen keyboard, if assuming it goes into landscape mode, cursive handwriting, uh, T9, uh, in more words, your regular A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, number keypad, and the weird square blocky thing when you're searching through contacts. I like all of them but the last one. Um, T9 is my personal favourite. Uh, amazingly, even though with the big keyboard, I still find it faster to tap out T9 with these very large target area keys. What I really hate is the way that you search through the contacts. Because it goes A, B, C on one on every key, for example, if I do S, then it's sensible enough to search through and realise that, well, the next letter can only be a P for Spence, uh, an H for Chaley, um, or an M for Smith. So it might only show me those three letters. The problem is, is it puts them in alphabetical order and squishes them down again. It's impossible to go from memory and press the keys, where you can with T9, because they're always in the same place. I do S, and then I have to wait and see where the M, the H, and the T pop up. And it's just really, really awkward. I just wish we'd had just the normal T9 and the other input options available there. A lot of options in keys, and I can understand the rationale behind giving lots of user input options, uh, but it's just absolutely wrong. Right, what else do we have looking down at my list? We don't have Engage on here, and you know, we don't have physical keys. Engage and touch is going to be interesting, and that's probably something that the N97 is going to have to answer rather than the 5800. Certainly something like reset generation where you have to drag uh, your tile along. would work very well on a touch screen, um, but I'd try to see how um, Resident Evil Degeneration um, and the, any of the other third person shooters would work on there. So I'm missing some of my games. Luckily enough, uh, most of the engaged titles that I enjoy, um, such as the Solitaires and Sudokus, are all based on Java games, and I can download those as Java games themselves. Whether that's good or bad for the engage, is for another issue. Uh, I'm missing LifeBlog on the PC, and this is one of the reasons that I love the N95 still. Nokia's LifeBlog software it has been superseded by Nokia Photos, and yes, there is an import option, uh, and yes, there are uh, most of the things are still there, but there are some areas where LifeBlog still wins. I still have everything in LifeBlog. I can drag over photos uh, into a folder on my PC and then drag them into LifeBlog, and in actual fact, that's what I'm doing with my 5800 pictures. But and, and this is an issue with Nokia uh, and an issue with me. Uh, it doesn't actually materially affect the 5800 because you do have Nokia photos, you do have OV share. Um, things I like about 5800 um, and dislike at exactly the same time is the music player. I love the fact that we now have central jack here, which is a three and a half mil jack, industry standard for your headphones. It's central and top on the unit. The touch interface for scrolling, I'm actually getting the hang of now. It's a bit worried before because the music player is based so much on searching. And of course, the search options in here is that dinky keyboard as well. It just masks off the letters, don't like that. Uh, but it's very fast to scroll through, it's very nicely organised, it's a reasonably good uh, touch interface given that you can only touch one thing at a time. We don't have things like kinetic scrolling though, I would expect it to see them in future software updates. What we don't have, and what's really annoying me, is these volume keys. Because whenever the key lock goes on, it locks everything. So if I want to change the volume, I have to reach in, put the key lock off, and then there's a, a second or two while the unit 
wakes up as it were and goes oh I can listen to keys again and then I can do the volume and then key lock can go back on again now on other mobile devices and I will look at the iPhone here volume is always there your physical keys you can reach into a pocket and put your volume up in there I'd love to be able to do that with the 5800 I can't now I could leave the key lock off but because anything touching the screen will touch anything I've got a whole list of contents from which have just been automatically made up in the unit. I'd like a way for those volume keys to just be on, just for the volume, while everything else, especially the screen, is locked. It needs to be halfway house from all off or all active. Also, you can't get to play keys very quickly. You have to press the MIDI button, and then to your music player, and then if you are in a play screen, you can get to your fingers on the Nokia N95 or N86 or any of the other ones, slide down, your buttons are exposed and they're available no matter what application you have. With the 5800, you have to get to the music application. I would love, and here's, here's my tip here Nokia, I would love on this media key, where you also have the media player pop up, I'd love it if there was one just underneath which was just play pause, because most of the time I just want to pause something to do it, and if I could just go, know that tap and then down very slightly is pause, that would work as well. It needs a little bit more work so this can be a really good music player. At the moment, it's only proficient. The pointer, well, I say it's missing from the things that are missing from the 5800. I lost the pointer at Heathrow Airport and I've been using Monster Battlestar Galactica size pointers, pens, and such like. Uh, it would be nice if it was on like a little retractable UA. I mean, I have USB ones. Oh, see, got it. So with the little mouse I carry, I have it one of these little retractable things. I And I know that you can get a pretend stylus pointer, but the, it just would so easily misplaced. I'd just love to have it on a little retractable cable and it would disappear again. Maybe that's just the geek in me that has a propeller on his head. Um, but I've been using um, other pointers, styli, fingers, pointy fingernails, and uh, my thumb point is actually now proved very useful in this mode like that. So, um, be nice to have some spare style in the box just so you can emphasize it uh, and possibly there's a space there for mail order as well but even without the stylus and using whatever it comes to hand or to finger as it were 5800 copes very well um, obviously this is an issue that affects resistive capacitive screens sorry this isn't an issue that the capacitive screens have to worry about because they're designed for fingers resistive screens it's nice that you have that accuracy i'm getting used to using a big finger pad uncertain of the big buttons and I think that just comes with time when you know where to hit and how much to press and so on because you certainly have to decide how much to press um, and it does leave finger marks on the screen and that's actually doable and the other thing of course is it's a Harley game it's an outside is software compatibility it's fifth edition uh, most S60 third edition will run on it the notable ones as we've mentioned before is Moby Pocket and I'm sure that we will see other software come up over time Getting that software at the device is going to be key. That's where OV Store comes in kicking up in May. So that's probably an issue to return to uh, at the end of Q2 of how we're doing for getting software onto these devices. At the moment, third edition compatibility is pretty good. There are some issues and I'm sure that these will be fixed in bugs fixes as they get reported to the authors who are still active and want to carry on doing software sales. It needs to be taken holistically with 5800. Um, the hardware is there. Uh, the software needs one or two tweaks, as we mentioned, they're both from Nokia and from third party. But on the whole, this is a good device. Now, the actual full summing up, should you swap over for another device, would you recommend this, would you wait, and all those other questions that you have been leaving in the videos, I'm going to address when I get back to Edinburgh. I fly uh, Saturday afternoon, 27 hours bed to bed, San Francisco, Los Angeles to Heathrow, and then back up to Edinburgh, and then a car home, obviously. And uh, at the end of that, I should sleep for a little bit. And we'll come back to you and give you a final roundup on the 1500 video diaries as we get back to good old Scotland. But for now, it's you and Spence, very sunny San Francisco, putting the glasses on again, looking moody, saying goodbye.